Today I am going to talk about iron farms in Minecraft Bedrock 1.16. I'm going to talk about all the mechanics behind iron golem spawning, how to build efficient farms, and how to um, determine how many iron per hour your farm will produce. I want to convince you in this video that the current iron farm mechanics in Bedrock are great and there's really no need to implement scare mechanics found in Java. Be sure to check out the description to the video and the pinned comment. If I have any updates or corrections to the video, you can find them there. Also remember that if you enjoy this video to like and subscribe. So first, uh, before we get into the video, I want to acknowledge Old Guy and Yodoff, two players who figured out all these mechanics that I'm going to include in this video. Um, so they did it through code digging and in-game testing, and I would just like to acknowledge their contribution. They are sort of the experts on um, village spawning, both iron farms and um, raids. So if you are not subscribed to them, I highly recommend you subscribe. And they have really good videos and really good tech on their uh, videos. So the sort of the best iron and raid farms on Minecraft Bedrock can be found on their channels. So to start with, a little background. So in the game, villages will produce iron golems. So this happens in both Java and Bedrock. And these iron golems exist to protect villagers from um, mobs and players if players attack villagers. But early on in Minecraft, players figured out that they can turn this into a good, reliable source of iron. And, um, and so you can design a village in such a way that it spawns iron golems. And then you can use these iron golems as a passive way to collect iron. So you can park your player close to a village overnight. And when you wake up in the morning, you can have a lot of iron collected. So in the lower right, we have an example of a simple iron farm designed by Hey Old Guy. So this is an iron farm that has 10 villagers, 10 workstations and 20 beds. So this is the minimum you need to produce um, iron golems. And so in this case, iron golems will spawn They'll spawn in the water stream, and then they'll be carried to the lava where they'll burn up and drop their iron. This is a very simple iron. This produces about 230 ingots per hour, which is uh, really good, um, at least compared to previous versions. And in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about like how, this, how you get that number and what you can do to increase that number for your farm. If you're interested in the history of iron farms on Bedrock, I highly recommend you check out this video by Navy Nexus. In this video, he describes an iron farm that was built on the TechRock server back in Bedrock 1.10. So this is pre-village and pillage. This is an iron farm in which they managed to overlap 80 villages and it produces about um, 2,300 iron per hour. Of course, it no longer works in 1.16 because iron farm mechanics have been completely redone. But if you're interested in a history of um, iron farming on Bedrock, especially at a high level, this is a very interesting video to check out and I highly recommend it. Here is the iron golem spawning mechanics in 1.16. In order for a golem to spawn, you need to have a large enough village. The minimum number of villagers a village needs in order to spawn an iron golem is 10. A village needs to have 10 villagers and 20 beds. So if you meet that requirement, the village will start spawning golems. 1.16 also has a work requirement. 70% of villagers need to have recently worked. If you build a village without workstations, you will not get golems. Another requirement is if you have more than 20 villagers, every villager also needs a bed. If you have 30 villagers, you will need 30 beds. If the number of villagers, number of beds, and the work schedules are all met, then the game's gonna try to spawn a golem. So the way this works is that each game tick, a village tries to spawn one golem. There are 20 game ticks in a second. So the game's gonna try 20 times a second to spawn a golem. It does not spawn a golem every time. It only has one out of 700 chance to uh, activate. This is random. 
So it's not every 700 ticks you get one golem, it's random chance every time. So you can get two golems right after one another. But at most it will spawn one golem in a village. The village also has a cap. 10 villagers can support one golem. So you have 30 villagers in a village, it will support up to three golems. If you have 30 villagers and you already have three golems living in the village, then it will not spawn another one, even if the one out of 700 chance succeeded. In addition, the game looks for a spawning location for a golem. And if it does not find one, it will not spawn the golem. So how does the game look for a spawning location? So the game takes the center of the village and builds a 16 by 6 by 16 box around it. Within this box, it will pick a random location. The center of the village is the lower northwest corner of the pillow of the first bed added to the village. So you can use this to control your village center when you're building a farm. The game's going to select a random position around the village center. This can check if that position is a valid spawn location. What makes a location a valid spawn is the block below the location must be solid. We'll get to that in a minute, what I mean by a solid block. And then within a 2x4x2 box at that location, there must not be any block collisions. So what does the game mean by a block collision? That 2x4x2 box must not contain any solid block or any block with the property 21. If the chosen position does not meet these requirements, the game's going to try again. It's going to try 10 random positions before giving up. So the spawning efficiency of an iron farm is going to be based on the chance that the game finds a valid spawning location within 10 tries. If the game does not find a spawning location within 10 tries, it will not spawn a golem and you will lose a potential spawn. So why does the game look for a solid block below the spawning location and checks for block collisions in a 2x4x2 box. This is to ensure that when a golem is spawned in a natural village, that it does not spawn inside a villager's house, or that it doesn't spawn inside the ground, or um, it doesn't sort of spawn in air. This is the way the game ensures that in a normal village, the iron golem spawns in a reasonable location. So what are solid blocks? So the first thing to realize is that the block code in Bedrock is kind of a mess. It is probably some of the oldest code in the game that's been patched and worked on by a lot of different programmers, and there's no consistency in it. So the type of thing, block commands that are used in one part of the code are not necessarily the same in other parts of the code. And so this note this notion that there are solid and transparent blocks and they're very clear which ones are which um, isn't really true. So the type of properties and functions that the game calls when it's say doing iron golem spawning is different than when it is doing mob spawning. So the type of commands and properties that the game is looking at when you're doing iron golem spawning is going to be different when the game is doing mob spawning. And so there's no, there's not a hundred percent consistency. There's a lot of stuff that overlaps between the two. Um, but there's some little quirk blocks that are different between the two. And it's not like the idea that there's some very discrete categories, like, like transparent blocks and not transparent blocks. And that's what determines everything. It's not actually the case in bedrock. Um, you can get a lot of idiosyncratic things where what you expect is sort of the case is not. Um, uh, so you have to sort of be clear on that. But luckily, um, I've gone through as best I can and generated a spreadsheet that contains sort of all the blocks and all the properties that I know of that are important for figuring out what's going on. And I'll link to that in the description. So in the iron golem spawning algorithm, when it's looking for a solid block, what I mean by that is it's calling the function block is solid. So for any block, if the function is solid returns true, that's a solid block. So what are these blocks that are solid? So this includes most blocky blocks, some, something that you would think is a full block. Uh, but it doesn't include things like air, water, lava, glass, leaves, or ice, stairs, top, bottom slabs, portal tiles, and many more. So those are the ones that golems cannot spawn on top of. A golem also can't spawn inside any solid block, so there's no trick that you can do here. 
the golem has to spawn on a solid block and it cannot collide with any solid blocks. So you can't um, do a trick where there's a block that replaces, that works as both. And so you can have multiple um, overlapping platforms. Doesn't work that way in um, the iron golem spawning algorithm. Other thing that the spawning algorithm looks at is block property 21. It's unclear exactly what this property is, but it appears to be blocks that have a full hitbox. So for instance, um, glass has block property 21 set. It's not a solid block, but it does have block property 21 set. So iron golems cannot spawn if they overlap with glass. But notably things that don't fit into this is air, water, lava, stairs, top, bottom slabs, walls, fences, fence gates. So the way to look at solid blocks and block property 21 when designing a iron golem farm is that you want a solid floor, say normal blocks, like stone, smooth stone, something like that. And then you can put water on top of it because iron golems will spawn in water. They will also spawn with fence gate, inside fence gates and signs, which is useful for propping up a lava blade. For the walls, so glass doesn't really work well for the walls, um, but you can use things like fences, fence gates, actually anvils. You could use anvils for your wall. Um, probably stairs is sort of the best one if you want sort of a flat surface on the inside. So those are all work and will not prevent iron golems spawning. Most iron golem farms are going to look a bit like this. Uh, so they either have one or two platforms. Two platforms is the max you can fit in. You can't do anything tricky and fit in another one. That's the max you can have. And that's because of the solid block properties we talked about before. So given that the maximum number of platforms you can have is two, the maximum number of spawnable blocks in an iron farm is 512. The total number of blocks searched for is 1,536. And so therefore the chance of the game finding a spawnable block is one third every time it looks for one. So if the, the total efficiency is going to be the chance of finding a spawnable block in 10 attempts. Using the rules of probability, we can calculate a spawning platform efficiency. Specifically, we're gonna be using a binomial distribution. So platform blocks here, that's the number of spawnable blocks in our platform, whether we have one or two platforms. And so the probability of finding a successful spawn block is going to be the number of platform blocks you have out of um, 1,536. So that's our probability of finding a valid spawn block. Conversely, the probability of not finding it is gonna be one minus that. The so one minus platform blocks over 1,536 is the probability that um, you do not find a spawnable block. That's the probability of failing. The probability of failing 10 times in a row is going to be that raised to 10. So 1 minus platform blocks over 1,536 raised to 10 is the probability of not finding a spawnable block in 10 tries. We want to calculate the probability of finding a spawnable block in 10 tries. That's going to be 1 minus that. So to visualize what spawning platform efficiency looks like, I have plotted uh, the equation where we have the number of spawnable blocks along the x-axis and the efficiency along the y-axis. The thing to note here is that because the maximum platform size is 512, we can never actually reach 100% spawning platform efficiency. In reality, the maximum is 98.3% um, efficient. So what that means is that approximately 2% of our possible golem spawn events are going to fail because uh, we can't build a platform long enough, large enough. Another thing to note here is in reality, there's not much difference. There's only a very subtle difference between 400 and 500 blocks. A very slight difference between the two. So you really don't even need um, the full 512 blocks to kind of approach a really excellent iron farm. So something to keep in mind when you are sort of deciding between a couple different designs to build, and we'll get back to this a little bit later. Based on the mechanics we've talked about so far, we can actually calculate 
what is the rate of iron production for a maxed farm. We do this by considering um, that we can have, on average, one attempt per 700 ticks. Then on average, we'll get 98.3 golems per 100 attempts. It's coming from our maximum spawn platform efficiency. Then on average, we're going to get four iron per one golem. And then we have um, 72,000 ticks in an hour. If you put all that together, what we get is the maximum production of an iron farm is a little bit above 404 iron per hour. Anyone who is saying that their single village farm produces more than this is either lying or they didn't measure their farm long enough to get an accurate rate. There are definitely a lot of people out there who will use very clickbaity titles and say that um, their iron farm makes way above what is physically possible. There's also people who may test their farm for one hour and get a lot, large number and use that or test it for like five minutes and multiply that out. Um, but based on the game, based on what we know about the mechanics, the maximum iron farm production is a little above 404 iron per hour. In practice, your iron farm production will be below this maximum rate. This is because this calculation does not take into account how quickly iron farms kill iron golems. So in the next video, I will discuss how to use simulations and mathematical models to include killing rates into iron farm production calculations. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and would like to know when part 2 is released, be sure to subscribe to my channel and join my Discord analyzing Minecraft. I plan to make additional videos on other bedrock mechanics. If you have any suggestions on ones that I should cover, please let me know down in the comments. I am very interested to know what y'all are curious about and I would love to cover topics that interest you.